Okay, let's start to use Admin Center. I love it. So I am on the Admin Workstation and I will run PowerShell. And first of all, I will download uh, the Admin Center. Let's start a, a bit transfer. Okay. And let's start to go to IKMS Mac or download. Windows Admin Center, and let's start to uh, uh, download the product. <clears throat> so he's connecting and he's transferring the background intelligent bits. So you know it's something very nice. And with bits, you can restart where you stop the downloadable file. So it's very known, okay? Now I will start my process of installing and, and, and running the uh, the uh, installation, I'm, I'm going to um, set the registry with the port and I will generate um, uh, SSL. So let's start the process, argument list, download, and QN, log, registry, port, uh, and the ports here, and I will do generate for the certificate. So the installation will take two minutes. After installation, you may encounter uh, encounter the error message "error connection refused." If this occurs, restart the admin console. Okay. So let's wait two minutes. All went fantastic. So all has been installed. So now let's connect to our server. Let's run this, and we connect directly to our uh, admin center. So for that, I will go and connect to the uh, to the uh, admin center on port 443 and I will do enter when prompted just type your credential and the password okay so uh, Sometimes you can have a pop-up uh, new in this release, okay? And uh, we can review all the con all the connection page, and that include the uh, admin uh, server. So now let's go to all connection and go and add. And I will I need to add a server. I can add a VM, Windows PC server cluster with Windows Server, Azure Stack, HCI, Hyper Convergent. So I'm gonna I'm click on add. And on the name, uh, on the server name, I'm going to add my domain controller. Okay. And uh, you must ensure that you use another account for this connection is selected. And I'm going to add, of course, again, my admin account here and my password. And I will do add with credential. So if you have a, mess a message saying that uh, you can't, you can add the server to your list of connection, but we can't confirm it's available. Up here, select add, uh, and in the all connection pane, select uh, again uh, the uh, ASE server one and then select manage as. Uh, and in the specific credential dialog box, ensure that use another account for this connection option is selected and enter the admin, okay? So this is important. So I can use add here, okay? Uh, and um, and uh, I can select, you know, this one. I can click on manage as and, and specify this credential. Okay, so, uh, um, and this is, you know, a way that you're sure that you're connected to the right one. Okay, so uh, um, this credential is stored for this. You, you, your credential didn't work, try again. So, uh, use crease credential. Uh, okay, so that's good. So I can use my here, let's see. Okay. 
So I'm just going to be sure that it's okay. And I'm going to type the password again. P A. Okay, let's see if it's okay. Yeah, that's good. And I do continue here. And now it's okay. Okay, so it's something that you can have. Let's see how to install an extension. This is very nice. I'm going to go here in the setting here. And on the setting here, I will go on extension. And you can review the available extension. There is so many here, okay? See, you have very, very nice. And you have one with security preview, okay? So uh, I can click on security preview here. And this tool provides you the latest information about your server and cluster security, see? This is very nice. You can have some information here. So I can go here and click on install here. Okay. And the extension will install and Windows Admin Center will refresh. So if I go on install extension here, I can see that uh, you have, you know, installed an extension and you can verify that the list include the DNS preview extension. Let's see here. Yeah, DNS preview extension here. So on the top menu, next to settings, select the drop down a row and select server manager. Okay, so uh, I can see that I have my uh, server manager. And here, I can go now to Server Manager. On the Server Manager, I'm going to select uh, this one, okay? And I can uh, go here, connecting, and I'm here. So to install the DNS partial tools in the left pane, in the list of tools, we can select uh, DNS. Okay, so here we have a list, list, okay, so we have all this here. So I will install here DNS here. And in DNS, I can, you know, start to do installs. Okay, so I'm going to do install here. And he's installing that. And hurrah, that's all. You can see, for example, kotoso.com and you can review the list of DNS record all down here. Cool. So now we will, ver we will verify the remote admin. Okay, so in uh, in your admin center, in Windows Admin Center, in the left pane, in the list of tools, select overview. Okay, so you can, you can go here and uh, in the tools, I'm going to select overview. So I'm just going to go here. Just to be sure that I'm the right server. Oh no, I must be on admin, on my admin center. Sorry. So here I just clicked on my server and overview here. And in the overview, uh, uh, you have some admin center basic service information and performance monitoring. In the left pane, the list of tools, scroll down and review the basic admin tools available. All this, see, all these tools is available. And we're going to select role and future. That's it. And you can note which roles and future are listed, are installed, in which one are available to install. Scroll down and we're going to select the Telnet client. Okay, so we're going to go here and we go in, we're going to select the Telnet client. Okay, just have to find it. Yeah, that's it. It's available. It's not installed. And we're going to click on it here. Okay, just have to do no, not like this. Sorry. Telnet client. Yeah, that's it. And now you can click on install here. In the Start Rules in Future Pane, select Yes, okay, here, yes, and wait for the message confirming that Telnet Client was installed successfully, okay, so I'm going to click on 
here yes and that's it at the very bottom of the left page below the list of tools select setting so here I have setting here in the settings section on the right slide select remote desktop okay so here you have I have here and I have remote desktop and on the remote desktop section select the option allow remote connection to this computer and save it so I go here okay see so it's very easy to do what you want here and uh, on allow remote connection for this computer checkbox allow here and then select save okay so that's good we did it so in the left uh, left pane the list of tools select remote desktop okay so here i will have remote desktop here so here's remote desktop and in the remote desktop here see uh, I can you know just welcome and put a credential and select connect okay cool if I want to do the same thing here on server manager or connection I can also do the same thing here And I can go all down in the setting here and also go and remove desktop and enable remote desktop okay remove desktop here and I can enable this also on your on your DC one so I can connect now to my DC one by remote desktop just using the admin center so again I'm gonna just select the right one here I'm going to save and now of course I can connect directly to my remote desktop for that I just go here on remote desktop and I can now if I want connect directly with my password and click on connect here see so I can put the password okay and I can confirm and I can do connect now now I'm connected to my remote desktop and I like it because it's inside you know just a page wow this is amazing okay so I let the disconnect here and that's it show you now how I can also do uh, uh, admin server with remote PowerShell so let's do a small lab here you can, you can use also and for example I'm gonna go in my DC1 and now you see I'm on my DC1 and for example I can display the status of application identity services so for that I just do get services and I can see the status of this one and you can verify that the service actually is stopped so if I want to, if I want to start it you can do like this and you can start it like this and that's it and if I again do a get service app ID I see it started okay so you have just installed the Windows Admin Center and connected to, uh, it to the server you perform a number of remote management tasks, including installation of future, as well as enabling and testing remote desktop connectivity. And finally, you use PowerShell remoting to check the safety of your service and start it. That's all for Admin Center. Thank you, folks.